Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, a podcast series hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Through personal stories and interviews with experts, we expose the true scope of migraine by exploring symptoms, treatments, research topics, and more. This episode is brought to you in part by our generous sponsors, Amgen Novartis and Alder Biopharmaceuticals. Dr. Renee Eager, an OBGYN, summarizes contraceptive options and hormonal management for premenopausal women with migraine, including their risks and benefits. Since 2015, Amgen and Novartis have been working together to develop pioneering therapies in Alzheimer's disease and migraine. Together, Amgen and Novartis share in a mission to fight migraine and the stereotypes and misconceptions surrounding this debilitating disease. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. After a, um, such an interesting scientific session prior to this, I think that you're going to find this uh, pretty um, easy uh, to understand and um, uh, interesting topic for an OBGYN to be talking about. Because I want to uh, thank Dr. Godley for the invitation, but I have to say when I received the invitation, I was asking myself, um, what in the world can an OBGYN tell otolaryngologists and neurologists and other migraine specialists um, about headaches, um, because in my world, uh, we, don't, we don't think about that so much. And in fact, I probably can tell you more about all of my favorite athletes than I can about um, headaches. So um, instead, I think I'm actually going to focus on what it is um, that I do every day as um, a, an OBGYN and how our specialty actually looks at headaches. I have no financial disclosures. So my learning objectives are to define the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology's recommendations for contraceptive options for patients with migraines, um, and the U.S. medical eligibility criteria for contraceptive use as it relates to migraines and migraines with aura. And then finally, I'm going to review the options for hormonal manipulation, as you refer to it, for premenopausal patients who have menstrual migraine headaches. So as a gynecologist, um, many of my patient vi visits um, center around attempts to either get pregnant um, or to avoid pregnancy. And there are essentially three clinical scenarios um, I address with sexually active, reproductive aged women. So the first is women who actually want to get pregnant. So in these instances, my objectives are to optimize um, a woman's care to keep her and her fetus safe both during, and before and really, and during pregnancy. And preconceptual counseling in these patients includes assessment and um, treatment of medical problems. With respect to uh, migraine headache management, patients are often treated with NSAIDs, um, tryptans, and ergot derivatives. In pregnancy, and that will probably be addressed later in this session, um, first-line therapy, therapy is usually acetaminophen. NSAIDs and tryptans are typically used as second and third-line treatments and are um, reserved for use in the second and the third trimesters. Tryptans in particular pose the risk of vasoconstriction of the placental blood supply with sumatriptan having the best safety profile. Ergotamine is actually absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy um, due to the potential to induce hypertonic uterine contractions um, and vasospasm or vasoconstriction. So the second answer is for women who um, want to avoid pregnancy. Um, a typical woman spends approximately five years of her reproductive life trying to get pregnant and the other 30 years trying to avoid it. So in fact, data fairly consistently shows that approximately half of all pregnancies are actually unintended. So we generally want to choose a contraceptive method that a patient is likely to be the most compliant with, is the most effective, and would be the safest for her. Sterilization and long-acting but reversible forms of contraception, are, um, which are commonly referred to as LARC methods, um, such as IUDs and implants, are the most effective forms of contraception with, with less than 1% of patients experiencing an unintended pregnancy within one year of use. 
spoiler alert, these forms of contraception, even the progestin secreting IUDs, have proven safety in patients who experience migraine headaches with or without aura and um, in patients who have menstrual migraines. The next most effective forms of birth control include estrogen progestin containing pills, which are often referred to as combined oral contraceptives. This also includes transdermal patches and vaginal rings, as well as intramuscular long-acting um, Depo-Provera. And these are methods with one-year typical use failure rates of anywhere from six to nine percent. So approximately 28% of U.S. women use some form of hormonal contraception. Up to 25% of U.S. women are affected by migraines, largely during the reproductive years. So the question we are often asked is whether estrogen-containing contraception is safe for women who have migraine headaches. This shows the one-year prevalence of migraine headaches by age and gender. Close to 25% of reproductive age women have regular migraines, and the pre peak pre prevalence is in women who are of reproductive age. So finding a birth control method that is safe and is effective for these women is vitally important. One commonly recognized risk for migraine patients is the risk of ischemic stroke. In this survey by Beck, showed that the overall stroke risk increases with age. The risk is 2 per 100,000 in 20-year-olds and 11 per 100,000 in 40-year-olds. This risk increases in the setting of migraine headaches up to 8 per 100,000 in 20-year-olds and 70 per 100,000 for 40-year-olds. The risk increases further with combined oral contraceptive use. Up to 280 per 100,000 women um, who are 40-year-olds who are using combined oral contraceptives are at risk for stroke. 40-year-olds who take combined oral contraceptives who have migraines with aura have one additional stroke per 500 patients. Further evidence for this was published in 2017. These are uh, the results of a national health care claims nested case control study of over 25,000 ischemic strokes among reproductive aged females. And just the use of estrogen containing pills showed an increase in a woman's risk of ischemic stroke. A history of a migraine headache without aura and without the use of estrogen containing pills also increased the risk of stroke. But it was really the presence of migraine with aura that tilted the scale in terms of stroke risk. The risk of stroke was highest with an odds ratio of over six in patients with migraine with aura on estrogen containing oral contraceptives. So I think you are getting the picture here. So when discussing a, thir a, um, a hormonal contraception, it's, um, imp I think it's also important to acknowledge the role that progesterone can play Second and third generation progestins were developed to actually provide less androgenic properties than first generation progestins did. The third generation progestins in particular have this advantage. However, early studies suggested an increased risk of venous thromboembolic events, particularly with the third generation progestins. A number of other factors which we're not going to discuss today may influence this risk as well. Levonorgestrel is a second generation progestin and is considered the progestin with the lowest VTE risk. But the important thing is that second or third generation progestins do not seem to impact the risk of ischemic stroke, regardless of what dose of ethanyl estradiol they are combined with as an, a combined oral contraceptive. This um, was based on a 2016 systemic review of 26 articles which showed that progestin-only pills, injectables, implants, and levonorgestrel, which is a progesterone secreting IUDs, um, were not associated with an increased risk for any venous or arterial events. So um, progestin-only contraceptive formulations, even oral ones, which may not actually be as effective as those that contain estrogen, um, are considered generally safe, even in patients with a history of migraine with aura. 
So how do we determine eligibility for various contraceptive methods? The US medical eligibility criteria for contraceptive use and the US selected practice recommendations for contraceptive use are guidelines which have been adapted by the CDC from the World Health Organization. Um, they provide recommendations on the safe use of contraceptive methods for women with various medical conditions. This is actually an app that you can get on your phone, and if you don't already have it, you should consider um, downloading it. The, um, the data is updated every five years and was last um, updated in 2016. The recommendations are divided into four categories. So categories one and two are conditions where either no restrictions exist or the method can generally be used safely with appropriate follow-up. Categories three and four indicate the contraceptive choice um, poses potential health risks to a patient are generally not recommended. So ACOG, or the American College of OBGYN, recommends that at the time of contraceptive initiation, the diagnosis of migraine, with or without aura, should be carefully considered in all women who present with a history of headache. Combined hormonal contraception can be used in women who have migraine without aura and no other risk factors for stroke um, with a US MEC category of two. Whereas estrogen containing contraceptives are not recommended for women who have a migraine with aura because of the increased risk of stroke with an MEC category of four. So the third and the final reason we prescribe contraception is as an adjunct in the treatment of disease. Examples of this would include women who use combined oral contraceptives um, as a way to decrease monthly menstrual period when they have symptomatic anemia, or women who use progestin-secreting IUDs um, to help prevent the risk of um, the development of endometrial hyperplasia, for example, if they have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And menstrual migraines, in my estimation, actually fill, falls in this type of category. <clears throat> so menstrual-associated migraines um, affect approximately 8 to 14 percent of women. These are headaches that typically occur within two days before the onset of menses and last through the third day of menstruation. They are almost invariably migraines without aura. Fluctuations in normal cycling estrogen and progesterone levels appears to be the trigger in the initiation of these headaches, although I look forward to what my neurology colleagues have to say about that. Um, in particular, menstrual migraines appear to be triggered by a physiologic drop in progesterone levels at the time of menstruation. Well, progesterone and estrogen, both. So menstrual migraines can be treated with NSAIDs, tryptins and ergot derivatives. In fact, a, um, a small placebo-controlled trial published in 1990 showed that prophylactic naproxen given twice daily beginning seven days before the onset of menses will significantly decrease the frequency, severity, and the duration of a menstrual migraine when compared with placebo. So the goal of hormonal, menstruation, um, hormonal treatment regimens for menstrual migraine is to minimize estrogen and progesterone fluctuation most combined hormonal contraceptives allow for a drop in the ethanyl estradiol concentration during a placebo week, which can trigger the menstrual migraine. So the extended use of hormonal contraception is an effective and safe way of minimizing endogenous hormonal fluctuation. And by this I mean using a particular hormonal contraceptive in a continuous, uninterrupted fashion. For patients with menstrual migraines, the use of continuous um, combined oral contraceptives, rings or progestin-only oral pills, Depo-Provera, and even subdural um, progestin-secreting implants are all ways of eliminating normal hormonal estrogen and progesterone cycling. So rather than being contraindicated, these methods offer ways to improve headache severity and frequency. And when using oral contraceptives this way, eliminating the pill-free or placebo week is not only safe, but it also preserves a, um, a stable hormonal environment. Um, and while progesting secreting IUDs are safe for women who have migraines, they really don't, are not particularly helpful um, in, um, uh, in the, the treatment of um, the menstrual-associated headaches. 
So to summarize, ACOG and the USMEC classify non-estrogen containing contraceptive methods safe for women with migraines with or without aura. The ischemic stroke risk um, associated with estrogen containing contraceptives is unacceptably high for women um, with migraine with aura. And effective alternatives exist for these patients desiring reliable contraception. Um, for patients with menstrual migraines, the use of hormonal methods that allow for steady state estradiol levels appears to be effective in mitigating and in some cases eliminating menstrual migraines altogether. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.